Would you like to open a tea house, a tea shop, or maybe you have your own idea of tea business but don't know where to start? This video is meant for you. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nano Shan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you're new here in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, make sure to click on the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy watching this video. Today we are speaking about tea business, opening a tea business. You know, this is the question that I get asked most. It can be on YouTube comments, in private email, in Instagram message, on Facebook. This is the question that you guys ask me the most. How do you open a tea business? So I thought, let's make a video about it. Actually, there will be two videos. This is only the first part. So that the next time you ask me the question, I can just send you a link and the answer is given. So before we start, first of all, some limitation about this video. Well, it is based on my personal experience. I've opened uh, and I found, the, let's say, the Nanoshan uh, online tea shop, the Nanoshan tea house, and there is much more out there than just a tea shop and a tea house that can be done with tea. Nonetheless, I will do my best to provide you a series of tips and suggestions to cover even a wider range of tea businesses. Well, let's get started. First of all, <clears throat> when you have this idea in mind and you want to start with the tea business, what should you do first? In my opinion, you should answer a series of questions. A series of questions that I have written here, just not to forget any, and we will go uh, to this question together with you. What you want to do is put your answers in writing better if it's just uh, a single statement. You want to be short, concise, and very focused on the answer. So basically, the shorter, the better, we can say. The first thing that you want to ask yourself is why do you want to open a tea business? Try to answer this very simple question. Do you want to make a living out of it? If not, shall the business be profitable or can you afford to lose some money, let's say like in an expensive hobby? If you want that it is profitable, do you want that the earnings are reinvested in the business or you want to take them for yourself? Moreover, are you going to do this alone or you plan to have some partners? Who? Do you finance all this by yourself or you plan to involve other investors or even get a loan from a bank or another financial institution? This is a very tricky point, by the way, and it's important that you ask your question about finance later sooner than later. Then, what do you want to open? <laughs> That's a very basic question, but do you want to open uh, an online tea shop? Do you want to open uh, uh, a physical tea house? So do you want to open uh, uh, a school about tea for uh, seminars, workshops, or maybe you have your um, own idea? Just write this down in a single statement. And where do you want to open it? Which place? Can be the web, can be New York, can be a small hut in the mountain, wherever you want. And the last question is, which type of products or service do you want to offer? All right, now, a lot of questions. So where should you start to answer? Let me give you the answers that I gave myself back when I actually started thinking about opening an ocean. I think it was uh, 2013 when this first uh, idea came to my mind and then I realized it the next year. So. Why do I want to open a tea business? The answer was very clear to me. I wanted to open a tea business to spread tea knowledge in the Western world where it was almost unknown. Do I want to make a living, a living out of it? Answer was very clear, no. I make my living out of something else. I didn't want to make money out of my motion. If not, like in my case, shall it be profitable? Well, um, 
let's say on the long term, I wanted Nanoshan for sure to be profitable, but I didn't plan to get a return from the initial investment. So my initial investment, let's say, was just given. I didn't want it back, but on the long term, I didn't want to put more and more money into Nanoshan on a regular basis. Do you want to finance all by yourself? The answer is yes. I didn't want to involve any other person from a financial perspective, and I didn't want to get any debit with the banks or other financial institutions. What do I want to open? I wanted to open an online tea shop, and I wanted to open a tea house, a physical tea house. Where do I want to open them? Well, on the web and in Berlin downtown, Germany. Last question, which type of product or service do you want to offer? Very clear, I wanted to offer farmer tea and uh, artistic teaware directly sourced by the producer. So these were the answers I gave to myself. And if you make those questions, you will find them in the description below to yourself. Uh, just answer them and you will have already a clear idea in just half a page of what do you actually want to do and why. So, after you have done that, what do you want to do is a consistency check. A, I would say a rough consistency check, just to make sure that the answer you have given are actually reasonable. I will give you now some ideas on how to do this consistency check. So, first point, let's say that you want to make a living out of it and what you want to offer is really exclusive tea. So, you know, real gonfucha tea, whole leaf, farmer tea, and so on. So the question here is, what do you have and what do you know that other people don't know? Because there are quite a few out there. So do you have uh, some special suppliers that other people don't have? Do you have a very good location? You find a very nice spot that uh, will bring you customers? Uh, or maybe you have already a customer base that you can uh, um, grasp on. So just ask yourself, what do you have that other people don't have? Another more important question is, uh, uh, do you have enough money? And for that, uh, I would do a very rough financial plan. Very, very rough, just to have an idea of how much money do you need. And uh, if you don't know where to start, ask other business. It doesn't have to be a tea. It can be a, a coffee business, a chocolate, something similar. Um, maybe if you're going for exclusive tea, you want to find an exclusive business, better if it is in the gastronomy. Try to find something similar and ask those people that have already done it, how much did they spend? And just to give you my order of magnitude, it is really depend on the location where you are. So if you are, I don't know, in Asia is certainly not applicable, but I would say if you are in Europe, in one of the most developed countries in Europe, uh, I did it in Germany, for example, then um, I would say that if you're opening only an online shop, you should uh, uh, um, think about uh, a five digit uh, uh, in a Euro, let's say, or in dollar. It means uh, your budget have to be well above 10,000 Euro. If you want to open a physical, shop as well so it has to be a physical location let's say a tea house then it's actually six digit so well above a hundred thousand euros or hundred thousand dollars the next question is are you gonna manage everything yourself of course you need some help and if you plan to have several full-time employees you have to add one digit if you want to have several full-time employees with an online shop you need more than 100,000. And if you want to have several full-time employees with an online shop and also a physical location, it's better if you look more uh, towards the million. I know they are big values, but uh, you know that's the cruel uh, reality of how much this thing costs. All right, so um, let me see what else uh, did I note it down. Uh, Another thing you want to do for this consistency check is doing some research online on each of the nine questions that I told you before. So for example, you want to open an online shop, make a competitor research, uh, look around, let's say 10 to 50 other shops that sell something similar, what do they actually do? And what I do now is drinking some tea. 
and uh, uh, try to understand you know what they do how they do it uh, and uh, um, compare your idea with their also do you want to involve some partners if the answer is yes then look a little bit deeper into it try to understand in your country which are the possibilities of opening a partnership ask other people that already have partners how did they do you want to start writing down the agreement between you and the partner how do you split the tasks how do you split money what happened if some uh, of the partners want to leave and so on so sorry need a short break here and so on for basically every single question that uh, i showed you before so in a nutshell what you want to have you want to have a clean and unique concept if your concept is not unique then you want to ask yourself why people should come to you what do you have more that other businesses that are very similar to yours don't have so that the customer actually would come to you if the business is unique you want to ask yourself why it is unique why no one else did it maybe someone else did it and failed you want to find it out ask around but uh, the answer no one thought about it i am the first one is mostly most likely wrong in the tea business all ideas are more or less out there maybe not in your city maybe elsewhere but try to find it out and uh, understand that point all right small break hmm oh it's really good the black team from Yunnan all right so you have actually a very easy uh, way to open a business and you, I would say what I told you so far is something that everyone should do. Making yourself those questions, getting the answer, do a um, consistency check, uh, deepen a little bit each of those answers. It doesn't take a lot of time. Now, the rest of what I'm going to tell you today and in the next video is uh, a little bit more demanding, requires a little bit more time and uh, um, you can take a shortcut and just you know avoid that if uh, you are doing this thing just for fun it's not really serious you know you want to open an online shop let's say but it's just for fun and uh, uh, if you know your risk this is important ask yourself what if as other people what do you think will be my risk and take that seriously another point is money do you have enough money you want to know it in advance let's pretend that you don't have any running cost or very very little running cost it means that the cost once you have started that are associated with your business if you don't sell are very little then you can focus only on uh, making a proper assessment of the initial investment but you can forget a detailed uh, financial plan i will speak about uh, initial investment and financial plan actually in the next uh, uh, video in the second part uh, should come out next week and uh, uh, once it comes out i will put a link also at the end of this video and in the description below so um what else uh, well what you have to ask yourself is also if uh, uh, your uh, idea of business is compliant with the law and uh, uh, in case it's not uh, uh, you want to be very aware of uh, which risk you are going i know it sounds like straightforward but on the other side you know it's very easy to open an online shop so let's make an example let's say that uh, um, you want to open an online shop so you take a back shop platform like shopify the one we have they offer some templates so you don't need a lot you just pay a little you get the template you get your address and you start uh, um, basically modifying the website you don't need any coding knowledge because the, those templates are made in a way that everyone can actually customize them then you have already some suppliers for your tea for your teaware whatever it is and you buy from them you keep let's say everything at home so you don't need a warehouse you have your uh, once you put your product on the back shop you are actually uh, ready to go 
also all this payment system that's all things that aren't bad and easy to implement so you open your online shop you have your tier two you just wait for the first uh, order no marketing you know you just tell your friends one day you get an order you dispatch it you get the next you dispatch it so what happens if at a certain point you get the authorities realizing that you have this business because it's online and you get a financial check so they come to your place and uh, they start asking questions and uh, uh, they want to see that you are financially sound do you have an accountant that does all the financing for you do you have open a company or maybe is everything you know black and uh, um, what if other type of authorities pass by for a hygienic check because you are selling tea is uh, food so they might pass by and do an hygienic check and if you think that no one will find you, consider that competitors, even customers, and actually even lawyers can find your shop online and point you towards the authorities. It happened all the time. I don't know about your country, in Germany it happened. There are even a lot of lawyers that do all their money just searching online for shops that have something that is not according to law, sending them a reminder sometimes and then they sue just to make money out of it so these you know just to tell you the reason is a way of doing it very simple but not and you don't spend a lot of money but nonetheless uh, um, make sure that all the points that i told you before uh, you know you do just for fun you have enough money and that uh, um uh, that you you know your risk and you know if you are compliant with the law are uh, well known to you um, the next topic is sourcing suppliers. Where do you get your stuff? You might have already your ideas of suppliers. That's fine. You know, um, you can skip these. But uh, in case you want to open or you want to, uh, and you don't have suppliers, you want to widen your supplier uh, pool, you have a few options. One option is to go to wholesaler. Every country is large wholesaler and uh, they offer a huge amount of tea you know hundreds of different tea loose tea even good quality actually they, they can sell for very little um, money and, uh, uh, and actually quantity as well so you can buy you know just batches of one kilo or so you get your tea and you don't imagine how many shops out there do exactly like this much much more than you think really trust me most of the uh, online shop just and even the physical shop just buy from wholesaler at the very very least a large portion of their um, offer if not all another option is that you buy by other shop for example nanoshan is direct sourcing so we offer also a wholesale service and we have a few shops that actually buy from us and sell our tea there are different options there and you can go to shops like Nanoshan, they do direct sourcing. So you do indirectly almost direct sourcing if you want, or you go to shops that source their uh, tea else, uh, um, elsewise. So for example, by wholesaler, as we said. Another option, of course, is to buy directly by the producers. And here we have to distinguish between two. First of all, before telling which are the two options, you have to be very well aware, very well aware of the import process if you buy by the producer most likely it is in another country and you want to find out how to import that tea to your country which are the legislation which um, customs duty do you have to pay how the whole process work don't hope that you just send over a big parcel of tea and it goes through the customs depending on where you are most likely it doesn't work it might work maybe a few times if you're lucky and then at a certain point is over and you don't want to discover that is over when you already spent a lot of money for starting your business so uh, we said buying directly by the producer you have two options one option is finding those producers online you know some of them speak english even if it's japan india for sure um Sri Lanka, Nepal, China, uh, Taiwan, you know, many of them speak English. They are active there, maybe on Facebook, maybe on Instagram. Maybe you find their shop. They have also a local shop and you ask if you can buy from them and you buy from them. Another option is to go there and buy it uh, directly there. Now, um, they are very, very different, of course. Uh, the main difference is that uh, 
the first option is much easier just making a search on facebook and elsewhere there are so many producer um, and you can just buy from them the disadvantage of course is that you are not the only one but there are tons of other shops that can be reached by your customers that buy exactly the same thing they might call it different way they might maybe trick a little bit with the data around so that you don't realize or the customers don't realize it's exactly the same tea but at the end of the story it is uh, exactly the same tea that you are offering so you want really if you want for this option producer to know if you want to go there and buy directly by the farmer where the farmer is at the garden or order just from home um, there are other aspects involved with that, for example, getting samples, trying the tea. Um, if you are at home, it's a bit more difficult and so on. So all things that you have to consider. Anyway, so what uh, uh, I told you so far is really a little bit the basics of opening a tea business. Um, I will do a save another video about that uh, when we go more into details. And uh, uh, in that video, we will cover other topic. I will speak about different tools that you can use before opening your business to do some analysis. Um, I will speak about uh, marketing. What can you do for marketing? How important it is. And uh, um, I will speak also about uh, the business plan and the financial plan. Business plan and financial plan, of course, you can get those information also elsewhere, but I will try to be as tea specific as possible. By the way, one last thing, when we speak about marketing, you have to put on the other side uh, uh, your uh, products, your sourcing. So you can have uh, um, tea that is so-so, might be just by wholesaler and so, but you have a very, very strong marketing for whichever reason you can sell extremely well. I know really quite a few shops that I don't like very much the tea they offer. I wouldn't buy it, but they are very, very good at selling it. And it can be also the other way around. You can have very, very good tea, but no one will find it. And unfortunately, there are many shops that they have really good tea, super exclusive, maybe not a huge offer, but very, very good, and no one knows them. And uh, after a little time, they just uh, give up. So this is uh, the first part, the first of two. Next part will be next week. If you're looking, uh, watching this video later on, you find already a link in the description below or on the screen. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and to give us a thumbs up for all the effort we put to bring all this knowledge to you. Thank you guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.